What is up, people? This is Jay Barr with Bar Creative, and this time in 10 minutes or less, I'm going to show you a way to refine your editing workflow for speed, okay? So what I'm going to, I'm going to use two pieces of software for this. One is going to be Photo Mechanic, which is right here, and the other one's going to be Photoshop, okay? So normally, or a lot of the time, what I hear people are using is Lightroom, and I like Lightroom, and for portraits and things like that, I usually use Lightroom, uh, especially if I'm dealing with raw files. But let's say you have a tight deadline and you're trying to get something done quick. I use this process instead. It's much more streamlined. Photo Mechanic, if you don't know what it is, it's basically kind of a photo software for just sorting and captioning photos. It doesn't really do any editing. So it's, for, it's built for speed and it's really built for kind of the professional news photographer or photojournalist. The reason I was turned on to it is because um, I am a freelance photographer and sometimes we have to get things done quickly. So if that's the case, this is for you. Let me stop rambling and get to it. I have a band that I shot on June 1st called Rufus Du Soul. They were at Red Rocks, okay? And so I have just them in here because I want to keep things simple. What I've done is I've imported them into Photo Mechanic. Now, this isn't really going to be a tutorial as much as it's going to be kind of a, hey, let me show you my workflow and maybe you could take this and run with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the file name and I want to absolutely make sure that I rename this so I know that this is Rufus Du Soul. I mean, I could put that on. And this was at Red Rocks and you can see the date. Now, I name all of my photo folders this way. When you get to a point where you can't keep track of what's in them. I recommend this file structure. So if we look at the file over here, you can see I have the shooting date and then I have the band. And then when I get a bunch of these, like I have a 2017 folder in my archive where I just dump every 2017 thing into, you can list them in order by date, but then next to the date, you also have what it is. That's the way I organize my photos. So that's the first thing. The second thing is once I get these in, so this is the entire take. This is every shot I took of these guys. And the first step that I'm going to take is I want to weed out all the bad stuff, meaning out of focus, underexposed. Maybe it's not sharp. Maybe it's just a bad photo. And so that's what I'm going to do first. So I'll show you that process. I'll just double click on this and then I just go through and anything that I like I put a I click T. Okay and I'm not being overly selective. Again this is like me trying to be fast. And this is if you have a deadline like right after your gig. So I'm just going to run through and everything I like I hit a T for and I'll fast forward this process guys but that's basically what I'm doing is I'm going through and anything that looks decent I'm going to hit a T to tag it and otherwise I'm just skipping over it. Now for photographs that are similar I'll tag all the ones that look clean, even if they're almost the same, and I just keep going with this. Okay, I've gone through, I've hit T on everything I like, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to click on Tagged Only. So this is my first cut. So what I can do now is I can compare some of these. The next step I want to do is I just want to compare them and I kind of only want to edit the ones that I like better. Sometimes I don't care and I'll just edit all of them and then I'll just do this afterwards, but this is an important step. Like these two photos are kind of the same. So I'll double click on this and in Photo Mechanic I want to use the split screen and I just click the arrows to cycle through. So like this picture is actually actually the same and then this is the next one so I just look at them and my first gut instinct says that this one on the left is better so I'm gonna click the one on the left and I'm gonna hit one and one is gonna add the color rating of red so I know that anything that looks similar that has red on it I'm gonna go ahead and edit this one looks kind of dark to me so I'm probably gonna get rid of that but we'll leave it in and so what I'm gonna do is anything that looks similar to another photo like these two are kind of the same so same thing here I have the split and so out of these two, I like this one better. So that one's gonna get the one rating. I'm just looking for things like sharpness, facial expression. Like to me, this one, it looks a little bit like he's bored. This one, he doesn't look like, uh, you know, he looks more focused than this one. This one, to me, he looks bored. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, this is my better of the two of them. And then I have a bunch of these, right? So what I'll do is I'll start with the same image and then I'll say, all right, which one's better, this one or this one? And they're kind of the same, but I, I kind of like this one better. So now I'll change this one out and I'll say all right out of these which one do I like better and so far this one is the winner for me I'm gonna click on this give it that color rating of red and so anything that's similar I'm gonna go ahead through and kind of do that for so th in this case I like this one better and so I'll fast forward through this too guys you don't have to sit through this All right, so now that I have that done, now I'm ready to start editing. And this is where this really kind of shines. So I have mine set up so that my default 
editing software is Photoshop. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these like, sometimes I do them 12 at a time, sometimes I do, I, I kinda like doing them 10 at a time. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring this library back in so I can keep track. Literally what I'm gonna do, now that I have these highlighted, is actually I, I know that anything that looks similar, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip, uh, which I have my red ones marked, and let's just add this one to it. And then I'm gonna do Command E, okay? And so in Photoshop, it's going to open them automatically. It's a little laggy because I'm running this screen capture software. All right, now that these are open, the reason I like Photoshop is because it has all these hand shortcuts that I basically run Photoshop with my left hand and my right hand's for clicking. So what I'll do first is I'll hit F because F cycles through full screen. By the way, I'm using CS4. It's ancient. This is 2017, but whatever, it still works. Uh, C is for crop, so I'm gonna hit C, then I hold down the shift key, crop it, kinda get this to where I want. And again, this is for speed, guys. This is when you have a deadline. So there's the crop. I'm gonna just do Z to zoom. It's sharp enough. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my curves. The first curve I'm gonna make is gonna be an S curve for contrast. And let's see. So there's my contrast. And then I usually boost the exposure a touch. And if I don't like it, I can dial it with opacity. And then this one's done. Now, the cool thing, and by the way, spacebar, click and drag, moves it. So that one to me is done. I could do a little bit more with this. Maybe I put the vibrance up a touch. Maybe I add another curves layer to give it just a little more pop, but that's too much, so I'll dial this in. And so that actually looks better. So once I know this is done, I'm gonna go up, and I have this automation set up in my actions. And the way that you make a new one is you can just hit record, and so all the steps that you would wanna do, you, you can just do them, you hit record, you do the steps and then you hit stop and that's gonna be your whole automated function that you can just go and play. In this case, I've added some despeckle, some sharpening. I've even changed the image size down to 3000 by 3000. And the reason for that is uh, most of the people that I was submitting to wanted to have, they were all posted on the web, so they didn't need anything huge, first of all. And number two, uh, the other second reason is because they're all standard size, then you don't have some that are huge and some that are small depending on crops. And so 3000 by 3000 seems to be the industry standard that I've noticed. And so that's all programmed into this action. So once I have the edit done, I go ahead and I just hit play on this, either by selecting it and hitting play. You can see kind of the things I have in here, the speckle, just all this kind of, this is a separate one, so that's different. And this is kind of, basically it's sharpening, despeckling, which is like when you have JPEG artifacts, it gives these little specks. So I sharpen it, despeckle it, and then I resize it to 3000 by 3000 constraints and save it. That's all in this automation. So check it out. When I hit F1, I go ahead and I want, I want to flatten it because if I don't, it won't save the layers I made. And it's going to crush this down into a JPEG and then it immediately shows the next one. So this, this is what the process looks like. Command minus, command plus for zoom. Command zero goes full, you know, full size. So here we go. C for crop. And this is, this is how I edit when I'm on a very tight deadline. Double click crops it. Go over here. Again, I'm going to kind of boost my exposure. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, and if I overdo it, I dial it with the opacity, and it's still a little dark, so I'm going to put another layer in, and you can tell I'm using an older camera on this, so it's pretty, the image quality is not great. And again, anytime I overdo it, I want to dial this in. It looks like it needs a touch more contrast. So you can see how I'm doing this quickly and I'm dialing my settings with the actual opacity of this. And there we go, that one's done. So I'm gonna hit F1, flatten it, and that one's out. So I'm just gonna do these so you can see what it looks like. Um, and then that one's done. This one I don't like, so Command W. This one, I'll shrink it a little bit. Again, I want to do some cropping on this, try to get the black out of the bottom. You can see the monitors in the shot, just looks a little kind of bad. And I'm doing these quickly, like, like this shot, I don't even know if I would want to run this shot. But it's open, and instead of making that decision right now, right now all I'm trying to do is get through the ones that I selected and edit them. And this one looks okay. Like I said, I'm, I probably wouldn't edit this one, so at this point I'm like looking at it and I'm like, eh just gonna dump it and move on. Like I'm not getting upset about it. I'm just, I'm trying to crush this because my deadline, we're assuming that your deadline is rapidly approaching and you know, you just gotta get through these. And so you can even add this in rough, right? And that actually doesn't look too bad, but you can just go ahead and dial opacities. So just kind of bring this to where it looks all right. And then I do the same thing with this curves layer. And then 
That one's kind of done. A little more cropping over here. I'll maybe get a little of that speaker out. And if I can get a little more. See, that's the other thing too. Sometimes these monitors kind of get in the way, but that looks pretty good. Let me check my image size. And then I just pass it on and go off to the next one. All right, this one is one of those ones where like, if I can't get this crowd properly exposed without a ton of noise, I'm gonna dump it, that looks okay. So we'll go in. Um, this is pretty much where I need it to be for cropping. It's a little crooked, so, whoops. And this is crop, the space bar helps with your mo moving it. Sometimes I don't like to put all the exposure correction on one curve, so I just keep doing these and just dial it in until I get it to where I want. Last, whoops, last step is I'm gonna add my S curve for contrast and just dial that. And it looks a little dark still. One more of these, and there it is, boom. Now all the sharpening, resizing, saving, that's all in that automation. So. There's some YouTube videos out on automation. I'm not gonna do one here because it's probably its own thing. And this is pretty similar to the last shot. So this might be another one of those either ors. But like I said, at this point, I'm trying to be fast. Now, one thing that will disqualify a photo is if it's not sharp. And this appears to be a little fuzzy. I already did one of these, so that one's gone. This one's too dark. This one's kinda cool. Um, I'm gonna crop it first. I usually start with the crop just to see if I have something or not. Uh, if you want to go back, you can go to history, open. So I'm not sure about the crop, so in order to save time, I'm just gonna see what this would look like if I do my exposures and contrast the right way. It looks sharp enough. So I will try to crop this. I wanna bring this in. And maybe I leave it somewhere like See, that looks better to me, maybe a little bit. And so I'm using all these shortcuts, shortcut keys. This one I'm not crazy about. I'm just gonna finish this one off and send it out. Um, so this one is gonna get automated. And you can see, like, I'm just quickly going through these because don't forget what you have to do at the end of all this is you have to caption these too if you're working on some kind of either stock or newspaper or journalistic kind of thing. And, uh, so you don't wanna be up till five in the morning doing this. And usually you can't be anyway, they need your stuff. So again, I'm doing these rough and then I dial it with the sliders. Just make sure it's sharp, looks good. This crop is a little funky, I'm gonna tighten it up a touch. Just bring it in a little, that looks better. And flatten that out. And let's see, was that the last one? Yep. All right, so now that they're edited, what I wanna do is go ahead and go image, and set color class of photos, and we're gonna make these all yellow. Um, and that way I know that they're edited. So you can see how fast the process is. The one thing that I did set up, which I didn't show you guys, is that when I save these, they're getting saved to a folder on my desktop, which you can't see right now because I'm recording this video. But you can see I've called it Photo Mechanic Dump Folder, and then everything I've edited has ended up in here. And you'll notice you might've been like, oh, I thought you edited more than them. Remember I dumped I killed some of them because I didn't like them. If you want to see what they look like, you can double click and just kind of double click and get the full size previews and you can see they're much cleaner now that they're edited and out. And so this is my process, right? And then at this point, um, it's done. You know, you get it captioned and then you send it off to your person. So I hope this was helpful and I will talk to you guys next time. This is Jay Barr with Bar Creative and that is how I process photos using Photo Mechanic and Photoshop. Thanks for watching. Later.